everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy, just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, Three. Namaste. There. Now we're ready to begin. And today we've got a special adventure which is inspired by the Disney movie Moana. So we're off to a Polynesian island called Motunui, which is where Moana lives. And that's why I'm wearing my flower crown. But before we go, we have to go back in time to learn about the legend of a goddess called Tefiti. Coming up to stand in goddess pose, everyone. Taking your feet wide, turning your toes out and bending your knees. Take your arms out wide and bring up your hands coming into your goddess pose. Now, Tefiti is the goddess that breathes life into the oceans and the islands. Let's breathe in and lift up. And let's breathe out and send life to all of the oceans. We breathe in and lift up and we breathe out and we give life to all of the islands. Now Tafiti has a beautiful green stone at her heart which has got a spiral shape on it. Let's come into rock pose. Coming down onto your knees, we fold our body forwards over our legs and take our head down. Now this is where she gets all of her life-giving power from but one day it gets stolen by the demigod Maui. Coming up to stand in our Maui pose. Up we come with our legs wide and our arms wide. We turn our hands, make them into fists and bring them up, showing our muscles. Now we give them a kiss like Maui does. Mwah. Mwah. He takes the stone and he uses his magical fish hook. Let's come into our fish hook pose. Turning to the side, reach one of your arms up and take your other hand to the other side. Now see if you can balance and try and get your foot behind you. Whoop! Try not to wobble. And see if you can kick your foot a little bit coming into your fish hook pose. Yes! Well done everyone. But he turns himself into a hawk and he flies away to escape. Now see if you can stretch your leg back behind you, your arms out to the side, coming into your flying pose and coming up to stand well done everyone but on his way escaping he gets attacked by a lava demon called Tekar coming into our volcano pose down onto your knees everyone hands down in between your knees as we breathe in let's lift up here we go and as we breathe out let's whoosh lava to the sky whoosh and again breathing in and whoosh some lava Whoosh! Oh no, this sends Maui's fish hook and the heartstone of Tafiti flying into the ocean. Now, a thousand years later, on the island of Motunui, Moana is a baby girl. Let's come into rock the baby pose. Sitting on your bottoms with your legs out long in front of you. Take hold of one of your feet and pop it in the crook of your elbow. Now give it a little cuddle, like you're cradling a little baby Moana. Oh, she's so sweet. Now she is in fact the daughter and heir to the chief of Motunui. Let's switch sides, popping your leg down, lifting up the other one and putting that in your elbow and giving your baby a little cradle on the other side. Oh, baby Moana. She loves stories and she really enjoys playing with the ocean. She likes running towards it. Coming up to stand everyone and let's run into the waves with Moana. Run, run, run into the waves. But all of a sudden, a beautiful green stone appears. It's the heartstone of Tafiti. Moana squats all the way down and she scoops up the beautiful stone. Wow. So beautiful, it has chosen her. All of a sudden, her father Tui calls for her and she stands up. Oh dear, she drops the stone back in the water. Moana's daddy doesn't like how much the water seems to call to her. Now Moana is 16 years old, bringing your hands onto your hips and standing nice and proud. Moana is now chief in training. 
But the island of Motunui is running out of food. Let's have a look inside the coconuts. Coming into coconut pose, sitting on your bottoms, drawing the soles of your feet together, holding onto your feet and folding your head all the way down towards your toes. Now we look inside the coconut by lifting up our heads. Here we go. Oh no, they're all black and burnt inside. And what about the fish? Let's come into fish pose. Sitting up nice and tall and point your toes away from you. Now come down onto your elbows and pop, pop, pop your chest up to the sky, maybe looking up or back behind you in your fish pose. Now all the fish look to be gone from the ocean too. Coming up to sit, everyone. Moana goes against her father's wishes and she takes a little boat beyond the reef to go and find more fish. Coming into boat pose, take your hands behind you and lift up one foot, lift up two, lift up one hand, lift up no hands. Oh dear, but she goes with her little pet pig, Paw. Sitting up nice and tall, everyone. Take your feet wide, keeping your knees bent. Take your hands inside your feet and open your shoulders coming into your piggy paw pose. And let's make a little noise like paw as well. Very good. But the ocean is so rough and it rocks and rolls them all over the place. Coming into rock and roll pose. Sitting up nice and tall, hug your knees and then tuck your chin. We're going to rock all the way back and all the way up. Ready? One, two, three. Whoop! Whee! And again, one, two, three. Whoop! Whee! Well done, everyone. Oh dear, it throws them out of their boat and they have to swim on their tummies back to the shore. Coming to your tummy, everyone, lying all the way down and using your feet and your hands and your arms to swim back to the shore. Now waiting there for Moana is her grandmother, Tala, who wants to help Moana learn her destiny. So she takes her to a secret cave. Coming up to stand, everyone. Let's come into our cave pose, taking our feet wide and our arms wide. Bring your hands above your head, making your palms touch above your head. Inside this cave, there are the most beautiful, huge boats. Coming to boat pose, onto our bottoms, everyone. Taking your hands back behind you. Lift up one foot, lift up two, lift up one hand, lift up no hands. There's also the most enormous waterfall in the cave. Lying down on your back, spreading your arms wide and pointing your toes up to the sky. Yes. Now Moana must bang the drum three times to find out who she really is. So we cross our legs and we rock up to sit. Yes. Turning to the front, everyone. We bang the drum three times. Here we go. Bang. Moana looks through her cosmonoculars, joining your thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. Wow! She sees. I am a voyager, sailing and discovering new islands across the world. I must make the island well again. Lowering your hands, everyone. Moana comes up to stand from cross-legged without touching her hands on the floor. Ready? and she runs out of the cave to tell her grandmother, I am a voyager! Now that night, Moana's grandmother Tala falls ill and she lies in her tent, coming to lie on your back, everyone, your arms and your legs long. All of this time, Moana's grandmother has been looking after something, that green stone heart of Tefiti. She reaches up to give it to her granddaughter now as she says, go, the ocean chose you. You must find Maui and return the heart to Tafiti. And with that, she lies back and takes her last breath. Coming up to sit, everyone. Moana knows now what she must do. She must find Maui. So she sets sail in one of the big boats. Taking your hands back behind you, lift up one foot, lift up two, lift up one hand, lift up no hands. Now lift up your mast, setting sail. Now Moana realises the following day that she's not alone. Stowed away is in fact her funny pet rooster, 
hey hey. Let's come into our chicken pose. Up onto your tippy toes everyone and using your fingers to help you balance in your crouch position. Now see if you can take your fingers off. Oop, try not to wobble. Put your hands on your hips, roll your shoulders back and make yourself two little chicken wings. And let's make our chicken noise. Yes. Now following along behind her is the spirit of her grandmother as a beautiful sparkling white manta ray. Coming onto your tummies everyone, taking your arms wide and pointing your toes back behind you. We lift up our chests as we soar through the ocean like a manta ray. Whoosh! But that night, later on, Moana and Hei Hei are hit by a big storm. Coming up to stand everyone, with your legs wide and your arms wide, we begin to spin. The lightning bolts from the sky. Oh no! And there's claps of thunder above our heads. Let's clap our hands. And there's more lightning as we spin a little bit more. And there's another clap of thunder. Clapping your hands. Oh no! The boat goes upside down, bringing your hands onto your hips and folding your body all the way forwards to look upside down through your legs. Ah! Rolling back up to stand, Moana and Hey Hey huddle up together, sitting on your bottoms, giving your knees a big cuddle. They hold on tight to the boat and they close their eyes, hoping that they're going to be okay. And in the morning when they wake up, they open their eyes and they find that they're in fact stranded on a desert island. Moana can hear something, so she rubs her ears from the bottoms all the way round to the tops. It's the sound of her voice. It's Maui, the demigod's voice, coming up to stand in our Maui pose. Legs wide, arms wide. Make your hands into fists and bring them up to show us your muscles. Now let's give them a kiss like Maui does. Moana demands that he comes onto her boat and that he helps her restore the heart to Tafiti. But Maui's got other ideas and he puts Moana in a cave. Reach your arms all the way up above your head. He wants to steal her boat so that he can go and find his magical fish hook. But Moana's clever. Moana uses yoga to escape from the cave. Coming to sit in bridge pose, everyone. Knees bent, feet flat, hands behind you, and lift your bottom up to wiggle out of a hole in the roof of the cave. Moana comes up to stand. She reaches her arms above her head and she dives forward, folding all the way down to get back onto the boat. Now Maui tries to throw her off again, but the ocean wave keeps rolling her all the way back up to stand on it and keeps putting her back on. Maui turns to the front and he crosses his big arms. He refuses to help her return the heart stone. He says it will attract dark creatures. But uh-oh, coming towards them now, it's the tiny coconut pirates, the Kokomora. Crouching down in a squat pose, everyone, and snuggle your arms in, making yourself into a tiny coconut pirate with your fingers and your face. Arrrr. They want the heart stone too, and they fire arrows at Moana's boat, coming into archer pose. Sitting on your bottoms, legs out long, take two fingers between your big toe and your second toe. Now draw your elbow and your knee all the way back and see if you can reach to touch your other toes. After three, let's fire the arrow. One, two, three, pew! Yes, let's do it on the other side. Two fingers between your big toe and your second toe. Bring your elbow and your knee all the way back and reach forward with your fingers. Ready? After three, one, two, three, they fire zip wires onto the boat to slide down, coming into slide pose, taking your feet all the way forward, pointing your toes and taking your hands back behind you. Fingers point towards your bottom. Now press your whole body up in the air, making yourself into a slide. Yeehaw! Now Moana and Maui, in just the nick of time, with Hey Hey, manage to escape, sitting on your bottoms. And let's go, phew! Goodness me, 
Now Maui just wants to be a hero. So let's come into hero pose just for him. Up onto your knees everyone, take your hands in front of you and your feet wide. Snuggle your bottom down in between your ankles and crisscross your fingers, turning them inside out. Now lift them up above your head, coming into your hero pose. Now if that's a bit ouchy on your knees, you can lift your bum, bring your feet back under and sit back on your heels. Yes! Now Maui knows that he did wrong by taking the heart stone and he agrees to help her put it back. But first he needs to find his magical fish hook. And that means going to the realm of monsters, to Lalatai. Ah! Now Moana sits with her legs crossed. She wishes to sail. And she asks Maui with her hands in Namaste, teach me to be a wayfinder. Maui has a powerful lesson for Moana. He tells her that she needs to see where she wants to go in her mind before she goes there. That's a very good lesson. Mm. Now the next day they arrive at a very big mountain. Coming up to stand in mountain pose everyone, your feet hip distance apart, your arms down by your sides. This is Lalatai, the realm of monsters. Maui and Moana climb up the mountain together. Here we go. Up we go, up we go, up we, up we, up we go. At the top, Maui does a special dance. Jump your feet wide and bend your knees. He takes hold of one of his elbows as he says, Anix. Then he does it on the other side. Anix. Then he flutters and shimmers his hands all around as he says, Howie. He puts his hands on his hips and he does a big blow. <sighs> Suddenly a giant floor door opens beneath them, holding onto opposite elbows and lift them up above your head. Now Maui, followed by Moana, jump down into the hole. After three, let's jump down to crouch, ready? One, two, three, boing! Oh. At the bottom, there are lots and lots of monsters. Coming into our monster pose, everyone. Take your feet wide, holding onto your ankles. Let's lift up our feet as we clomp about like a monster. Clump, 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 clump. Rolling all the way back up to stand. Now the scariest and sparkliest of all the monsters is in fact a giant crab called Tamatoa, who has a beautiful gold encrusted shell. Lots of treasures on it, coming into our crab pose. Sitting on your bottoms, knees bent, feet flat, hands behind you, and lift your bottom up. Now he's a right gold digger, and he loves everything shiny. So we're gonna go digger, 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 and kick our leg and say shiny, come on. Digger, 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 shiny. And the other way, digger, 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 shiny. Then Maui spots it, his fish hook, it's right on his back. Coming up into our fish hook pose, everyone. Standing up, taking your arm up, taking your hand to the side. Now holding onto your foot behind you, trying not to wobble as you kick your foot a little bit, coming into your fish hook pose. Yes, well done. Maui sneaks up on his tiptoes to go and get the fish hook. But he's a bit rusty with his magic and Tamatoa catches him in a big crab claw hug. Turning to the front, arms wide and wrap yourself up in a big crab claw hug. Help! Now Moana escapes from the cage she's been put in, taking big steps through some squelchy glow in the dark stuff. Coming to the side and take a big step, ready? Big squelchy step and stepping her back again and again. Big squelchy step into the green glow in the dark slime. This gives her an idea. She finds a barnacle. Coming into our barnacle oyster pose, sitting on your bottoms, soles of your feet together, holding onto your feet and folding your head all the way forwards. Now Moana covers the barnacle in the green glow-in-the-dark slime. So now it looks exactly like the green heartstone of Tefiti. 
she throws it up in the air. So Tamatoa goes chasing after it. Coming into a crouch position onto your tippy toes, everyone. After three, we're going to jump up. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! He goes after it because he loves treasure so much. And Maui and Moana can escape. Phew! Now Maui can practice using his fish hook and turning himself into some animals. But he's not really very good when he starts out. He starts off by turning himself into a shark head. Coming into our shark head pose, everyone. Lying on your tummies and crisscrossing your fingers behind your back. Lift up your shark fin and loll from side to side. Oh dear, this isn't much good. Then he turns himself into a starfish. Coming up to stand in your starfish pose. Legs wide, arms wide. Oh dear. Next he turns himself into a chicken, like hey hey. Oh, coming into our chicken pose. Feet together, crouching all the way down. Now seeing if you can balance with your hands on your hips, your shoulders and your elbows all the way back and making a chicken sound. And finally he turns himself back into Maui again, except this time he's lying on his tummy with a shark's tail. Coming onto your tummy, everyone. Hands under your shoulders and cross your ankles. Now lift and lower your feet like you've got a shark's tail. I don't know. Coming up to sit, he needs more practice. Moana, on the other hand, has been really learning how to sail. And she's finally learnt how to read the stars in the sky. Coming up into our star pose, taking your feet wide and your arms wide. Maui thinks she's ready and he gives her the oar to steer the boat. Let's take the oar now everyone. Sitting on your bottoms, legs out long. Take hold of one of your feet to be your oar. Moana knows what she should do and she rows towards Tafiti across the sea to return the heartstone. Let's sing together. Row, row, row the boat gently cross the sea. We need to get the heartstone to Tafiti. There's a bit further to go, so she rows with the other oar, putting that one down, lifting up the other side. Let's row again. Here we go. Row, row, row the boat, gently cross the sea. We need to get the heartstone to Tafiti. They arrive at Tafiti, but Tekar is there again, erupting her lava bombs. Coming into your volcano pose again, everyone. Onto your knees, hands down. Let's breathe in and lift up. And let's breathe out with a whoosh of lava to the sky. Whoosh. Breathing in, lift up. And whooshing some lava. Whoosh. Oh no, it manages to crack and burn Maui's fish hook. He's very angry about this and he turns himself into a hawk and he flies away. Coming up in our flying pose on the other side now everyone. Standing tall, lift up one of your legs, try not to wobble. Now send your foot all the way back behind you, using your arms for balance. Make your leg as strong as you can be in your flying pose. And coming all the way up to stand. He's left Moana and Hey Hey all by themselves on the boat again. Sitting down, Moana hugs her knees. She thinks, I'm clearly not the one to return the heartstone to Tafiti. She comes onto her knees and she reaches up with the heartstone, handing it back to the ocean as she says, Choose someone else to return it. The ocean takes the stone from her and she lowers her arms. But as she does, the spirit of her grandmother appears on the boat, Tala, to give her a big hug. Coming up onto your knees, everyone, your arms wide, and wrap yourself up in that beautiful, warm, loving hug. She helps Moana find her inspiration again, and Moana believes in herself. She sits back on her heels, brings her hands to prayer at her heart, and she sings, Come what may, I'll find a way. Then with a twinkle in her eye, with real determination, she says, I am Moana. Then 
she surfs on her boat with Hei Hei all by herself back to Tafiti. Coming up into surfer pose, everyone. Stepping one leg forward, one leg back, and bend your knee. Open your arms up and out, and let's surf back to Teka and Tafiti. Whoosh! When she gets there, Tekar is waiting for her and she chases Moana. So Moana jumps and surfs the other way. One, two, three, whoosh! Tekar follows her and Moana finds a way in. Just in the nick of time, Maui returns as a whale to splash Tekar. Coming into whale pose, lying on your backs, everyone. Knees bent, feet flat, hands down by your sides. Let's lift up our hips as we go bubble, 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 splash! And then lowering them all the way back down. He then turns himself into a shark again, but this time a full shark. Rolling over onto your tummies, everyone, and take your hands behind your back. Lift up your shark fin and let's loll and nibble take Car's arm. Nibble, 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 nibble. Coming up to stand, everyone. This gives Moana her chance and she climbs up the mountain with the heart stone. Here we go. Up we go, up we go, up we, up we, up we go. At the top, she takes a big step to see Tefiti. Coming to the side and let's take a big step forwards. Here we go. Big step. Tefiti isn't there. Moana turns to face the other way and she looks back at Tekar. Now she sees in Tekar's heart the same spiral shape of the heart stone and she understands Tekar is Tefiti. She stretches her legs long and she holds up the stone, pointing it directly at Tekar so it beams brightly towards her and catches Tekar's eye. Tekar begins to crawl like a tiger towards Moana. Coming down onto your hands and your knees, everyone. Reach forward with one hand, reach back with your opposite leg and crawl like Tekar. And the other way, reach forward with one hand, back with your other leg and Moana has total faith and she sits back on her heels. She bows her head forward, her head meeting with Tekar's head as she takes one hand on top of the other, presses her hands forward with the heart stone inside it into Tekar's heart as she says, you will know who you truly are. And then the magic happens. Tekar suddenly turns back into Tefiti growing up green and tall. Sitting on your bottoms, everyone, legs out in front of you. Sweep your legs round to one side. Tafiti sweeps round, twisting all the way around her to return life to the oceans and the islands. Then she goes the other way, taking your legs the other side, sweeping all the way round, twisting around to bring Maui a new fish hook and Moana a brand new boat. Crossing your legs, Maui and Moana say namaste. Namaste. Now Moana returns home to Motunui with Hei Hei as a hero. She teaches the villagers to become voyagers again. So they set sail in their boats. Coming into our boat pose, everyone. Sitting up tall, lift up one leg, lift up two, lift up one hand, lift up no hands. Bravely they go exploring and discovering new islands across the world. We lie ourselves all the way back now, our legs and our arms long, taking a few moments to enjoy some peaceful rest time after what has been such an epic adventure. We learnt so much along the way with Moana. We learnt how to truly believe in ourselves. That when times get hard, we can always dig a little bit deeper and we can always find the power and the strength that we need. That belief in ourselves is what sits at the core of it all. With determination, we can do anything. Even the little people can do extraordinary things. All it takes is that belief. 
And we also learnt to become wayfinders. That amazing lesson about seeing where we must want to go in our minds before we go there. That's what makes it happen. The power of our mind. We will always win if we believe in ourselves. Come what may, we'll find a way. Now it's time to wake up, so we wiggle our fingers, we wiggle our toes. We take a big stretch, pointing our toes and our arms away from us, then drawing our knees into our chest, giving them a cuddle and rolling over onto our sides. We open our eyes as we come up to sit, and we cross our legs and bring our hands together at our heart. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Now we always start in the same way, and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs, and bringing our hands together at our hearts, and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Now we're ready to begin. And today we've got a special story that you might already know. It's Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Lots of funny things happen in this story, but we get to go to Wonderland. So let's get started. Coming up to stand. Oh, something funny's happening. Oh, what's happening? Oh, everything's gone really big. I'm really small. Goodness me, this is very strange indeed. Oh, oh something else funny is happening. Oh, I seem to have gone really big. I'm enormous now. And look, I'm going to have a look. Can you see me? Oh, this is no good for yoga, is it? Everything's gone really tiny. Oh, dear. Oh, 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 hang on a minute. Oh, ah, there we go. Back to normal again. Phew. Now we can get started with the yoga. What? What's funny? I'm what? No. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Maybe this isn't going to work. Oh. Oh. Phew. Now I'm back to normal again. Now we can get started with the yoga. Our story begins on a warm summer's day with the sun in the sky. So we reach up to the sun and we say, Hello, sun. We find Alice lying on the riverbank with her sister, coming down to lie on your backs, arms out wide and lift your legs up. Alice is feeling so very bored. Her legs go over to one side as her head twists to the other and over to the other side as her head twists to the other. Oh, it's so lazy and hazy on this hot summer's day. Alice begins to have a daydream. All of a sudden, a white rabbit comes hopping by. Coming up to sit on your hands and knees. Spread your fingers wide, tuck your toes and lift your bottom. And then do a hop in the air. One, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. And again, one, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. The rabbit stops up on his hind legs, balancing on your tiptoes. He looks a bit worried. He twists from side to side, looking for something in his waistcoat pocket. He finds it, a pocket watch. He looks at the time and he tuts. Oh dear, I shall be late. I'm late, I'm late for a very important date and he hops off. Turning to the side, spread your fingers, lift your bottom and hop. One, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. And again, one, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. Alice jumps to her feet 
and she runs after the rabbit, running as fast as she can, chasing him. But he dives head first down into a rabbit hole. Turning to the side, reach your arms up and fold all the way forwards. Alice gets onto her tummy, coming down onto your bellies, hands under your shoulders and wriggle your shoulders up. She wriggles in to the rabbit hole after the white rabbit, without a thought of how she'll get out. But, oh dear, this was no little rabbit hole. This was a very big rabbit hole. Tuck your toes and lift your bottom up to the sky. Alice begins falling down. Her legs lift up, one at a time behind her. Help! Taking that foot down and lifting the other. Help! Coming to sit on your bottoms, everyone, with your legs crossed. The fall was lasting so long that Alice could sit with her legs crossed. And she could twist and have a look from side to side. Twisting to one side to see, ah, bookcases and cupboards. Ooh, and she twists the other side to see a jar of orange marmalade. Mmm. Finally, she lands at the bottom of the rabbit hole with a bump, twisting from side to side. Bump, 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 bump. Phew! There's no sign of the white rabbit, but there are lots and lots of doors. Coming into door pose, coming to two knees, take your leg to the side, take your arm up to the sky and try and open a door. It's locked. Come to two knees again and try another door. Leg to the side, arm to the sky, and come to the other side. That one's locked as well. <coughs> oh dear. Then Alice spots a table. Coming into table pose. Sitting on your bottoms, feet flat, knees bent, hands behind you. And lift up your bottom, coming up into table pose. On the table, there's a key. Yes! but it will only open the tiniest door. Coming onto all fours, Alice takes the key and she reaches it in to the tiniest door. It opens with a click. Yes, but to see what's on the other side, Alice has to lay flat on her tummy, coming to lie all the way down with your arms down by your side. Hmm. How she'd love to go through, because on the other side is the loveliest garden. <clears throat> Alice sits up and she gives her knees a hug, thinking, hmm, how am I going to get through there? And then she spots something else on the table. It's a little bottle with a label saying, drink me. Alice stands up. She puts her hands on her hips and she folds halfway forwards. She takes the little bottle, she brings it to her nose and she smells. Mmm. <sighs> she has a little sip. Mmm. <sighs> and then she drinks the whole lot. <sighs> Something funny begins to happen. Alice begins to shrink. Jump your feet and arms wide and take yourself from being a giant star to being a tiny little mouse on your knees, tucking yourself up into a tiny little mouse shape. Yes, Alice thinks now she'll be small enough to fit through the door, but oh no, the door's closed and the key's back on the table. So Alice comes all the way up. She stands high on her tippy toes, reaching her arms up to try and get the key from the table, but uh, it's just too high. Then she spots something else, a tiny little glass box. Coming to sit on your bottoms, joining the soles of your feet together, holding onto your toes and bring your head down towards your feet, closing your little glass box. She opens it up, lifting your head, and inside is the tiniest little cake. And written in currants on the top are the letters E, A, T, M, E. Eat me. Alice reaches in. She gets the little cake and brings it close. She spreads her legs wide and then leans forward to gobble it all up. Mmm. 
Mmm, delicious. But something funny begins to happen again. Alice begins to grow really, really big. Coming onto your knees, everyone. Starting in mouse pose all the way forwards. Let's grow slowly. Coming all the way up with your arms in front. All the way up and over your head. She grows past her normal size until she's on her hands and knees, feeling very squashed. And then she lies down on her shoulder, feeling even more squashed. Oh no, now I'm too big. She starts to cry. <laughs> All of a sudden, the white rabbit comes hopping past again. Coming into your rabbit hopping pose. Spread your fingers, tuck your toes, lift your bottom and hop. One, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. And again, one, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. He drops his fan. Alice sits up, feeling hot and bothered. And she takes the fan and she cools herself down with it. Crisscross your fingers, put them under your chin. Take a big breath all the way in and lift up your elbows, ready? And breathe out to the sky. And again, breathing in, lift your elbows. And breathe out to the sky. Magically, as she does this, she begins to shrink again. But oh dear, because of her crying, she's shrinking into a pool of her own salty tears. She has to swim. Coming onto your knees, everyone. Bring your hands into the centre and breathe in as you lift your arms. Ready? And breathe out as you lower down. Breathing in. And breathing out. It's a lake and she's not alone in this lake. There's a little mouse in it with her, coming into mouse pose. Turning to the side, on your knees, folding yourself all the way forwards. The mouse says, I'm a little bit frightened, so I'm swimming to the shore. There's also a duck in the water with her. Coming into duck pose, high up onto your tippy toes, bending your knees, trying not to wobble. Bring your hands onto your hips, roll your shoulders back and take your elbows back behind you. Ooh, the duck goes quack, 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 quack. There's also an eaglet in the water, which is a baby eagle. Coming up to stand, cross one leg over the other, your arms wide, scissor your arms and wave with your underneath arm. Now twizzle them round and sit yourself down like a baby eagle. Ah, ah. There's also a lorry bird, which is a bit like a tweety bird, only it's got a brush on the end of its tongue. Coming down onto two knees, wrap your arms around yourself and as you open up your beak, go and close. Let's try that on the other side. Arms wide, wrap them the other way, open your beak and and close. Well done everyone. Alice thinks what a curious bunch of creatures they are. They all swim on their tummies to the shore, coming down to lie on your bellies and swim using your arms and your feet. They swim right to the shore and then they come up to stand and think, hmm, how shall we dry off? I know, let's have a race, a caucus race. It's simple. All you do is run around and around in a circle. And they're off. Here we go, everyone. Running around and around and around. Goodness me. The race lasts for about half an hour until the dodo suddenly stops. Coming into dodo pose, down onto your knees, hands on your hips like little wings and take your elbows back behind you. He looks up and he says, the race is over. Everybody has won and all shall have prizes. Then they all sit back on their heels and look to Alice waiting for their prize. Alice stands up um, uh, and then she remembers. She has a box of currants in her pocket. 
She falls halfway forwards and she gives a current to each of the little animals. One for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you. Oh, all these cute little animals. It reminds Alice of her pet cat, Dinah, coming into cat pose on all fours. <sighs> Alice's cat, Dinah, she's lovely. She tells them all about how sharp Dinah's claws are, like a tiger, reaching out one leg behind you and reaching out one claw and make your claws really sharp. Rawr! And the other way, bring your hand and foot down and stretch out the other side. Rawr! But hearing about Dinah isn't very good for the little mouse coming into mouse pose all the way down with your arms down by your side and she squeaks off. Squeak, 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 squeak! Coming up to sit, the birds flutter away too. They don't like the sound of Dinah. Coming into bird pose, standing up, feet together, folding halfway forward and your arms down, then reach, lifting and lowering your wings. Wow! Wonderful birds, everyone. And a crab digger diggers over to Alice, coming into crab pose, sitting on your bottoms, knees bent, feet flat, hands behind you, fingers pointing towards your bottom. Lift your bottom up and digger digger that way over to Alice. Here we go. Digger, 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 digger. He says to Alice, stop going on about Dinah. And then he digger diggers off. Digger, 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 digger. <laughs> Alice sits oh, all alone again. <sighs> she has a little look around, using her cosminoculars, thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. <sighs> I spy a giant mushroom. And on that mushroom is a big blue caterpillar, lounging lazily, puffing on a pipe coming into caterpillar pose, lying on your bellies, everyone, hands under your shoulders, and wiggle, 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 wiggle all the way up. Puffing on his pipe, he says, who are you? Alice doesn't know who she is. All this growing big into giant Alice and tiny into little tiny Alice, she's got no idea. He begins to wiggle off. And he says, why don't you eat the mushroom? One side will make you shorter, the other side will make you taller. Good luck. Alice jumps to her feet, coming all the way up. Feet together, everyone. Bring your arms up above your head. She reaches one way to get one side of the mushroom and the other way to get the other side. Now she can adjust her size as she needs to. Up ahead, she sees a tree coming into tree pose. Bring one foot on top of the other, your hands together at your heart. Grow your tree up nice and tall. And, hmm, I wonder how strong the trees are here in Wonderland. You stay tall and strong. I'll have a go at blowing you down. Here I come. Doopie doopie doo. -doo, -doo, -doo. Oh my goodness, they are super strong here in Wonderland. Let's try it on the other side. Bring the other foot on top now, your hands together, and grow your tree up nice and tall. Oh, can you open those branches? Very good. Now Alice can see something in the tree. There's a big cat sitting in the tree, coming into cat pose on your hands and knees. This cat has got the most ginormous grin on its face. Ding! And it says, as it moves its eyes one way without moving its head, that way for the March Hare. And then it moves its eyes to the other side. And that way for the Hatter. And then it disappears in a puff of smoke, walking your hands back to come up onto your tiptoes and do a big jump in the air. One, two, three. Woo! But it leaves behind its grin. Ding! Alice stands in confusion. Well, I have often seen a cat without a grin, but never a grin without a cat. She decides to head to the house of the March Hare. Jump your feet wide, hands above your head, coming into house pose. 
At the house of the March Hare, in the garden, is a large table set for a mad tea party. Coming into table pose, sitting on your bottoms, knees bent, feet flat, hands behind you, and lift your bottom up. Sat at this table is the March Hare. Coming into hair pose, on your knees, crisscross your fingers behind your back and stretch your arms out behind you. Then fold your head all the way forwards, lifting your arms like two long hair ears. There's also another guest at this table, sitting all the way up again. It's the Hatter, turning to the front. Take your feet out behind you and see if you can just sit between your ankles. Now, if that's a bit ouchy on your knees or your ankles, sit up on your heels again. Yeah. Now, crisscross your fingers, turn them inside out and lift up your arms above your head, making yourself a very wonderful top hat. And sat in between the hatter and the hare is a little dormouse. Coming into mouse pose, turning to the side on your knees, folding all the way forwards. The little mouse has got its cheek on the table and it's snoring loudly because it's asleep. <laughs> Alice decides to join them for tea and sits at a chair. Coming up to chair pose, standing up, feet a little bit wider, bend your knees. Now lift your arms up to the sky, coming into your chair pose. But Alice doesn't stay long because no one is making any sense whatsoever. They ask questions like, why is a raven like a writing desk? Alice stands up and runs off saying, this is the stupidest tea party ever. And she runs right into a garden where the Queen of Hearts sweeps in. Sitting on your bottoms, take your legs out long and then take your legs round to one side. Bring one hand onto your knee, your other hand behind you and look over your shoulder. The Queen has got her guards with her who are all playing cards. Let's be the two of diamonds. Coming up to stand, bring your feet together and turn your toes out, bringing your heels together and bend your knees. Now bring your arms above your head, joining your fingers above your head to make the two of diamonds. Well done, everyone. The queen sweeps in a little bit further to the garden, sitting down on your bottom again, legs out long, this time, take your legs round the other way. Sit up tall, bring your hand on your knee, your other hand behind you. Look over your shoulder and look back to the front. She spots Alice and she's not pleased. She says, off with her head. Alice stands up and she puts her hands on her hips, feeling as powerful as she can. And she says, nonsense. The Queen's eyes grow large as she glares at Alice silently. She says, do you play croquet? Alice replies, yes. And it begins the strangest game of croquet ever. The balls are hedgehogs coming into hedgehog pose, down on your knees, folding all the way forwards. Now take your hands up behind you on your back and make them spiky like you've got prickles on the back of your back, like a hedgehog. And coming up to sit, the mallets are pink flamingos. Coming into flamingo pose, up to stand. Bring your hand all the way up and make it a little beak. Then see if you can hold your foot. Oh, try not to wobble and hop like a flamingo. Ooh, yes, very good, everyone, very good. And try flamingo on the other side. Bring your foot down, reach your other arm up, make your beak with your hand and hold your foot. Get your balance, try not to wobble and do a little hop. Ooh, yes, flamingos we are, indeed. And bring it all the way down and the hoops are made of playing cards balanced together in a triangle shape like our dog pose coming into dog on your hands and knees spread your fingers tuck your toes and lift your bottom up to the sky making your hoop shape very good everyone it was the strangest game of croquet ever coming to sit in the middle after that the Queen takes Alice to meet her griffin who has got the head of an eagle arms wide Swizzle your arms, wave with your underneath arm and twizzle them round. Ah, ah. Unravel your arms and bring them back. 
It's got the body of a lion. Let's do a lion pose with a big roar. Ready? After three. One, two, three. <laughs> Alice gets onto the back of the griffin and they fly together. Coming up to stand, your feet together, fold halfway forwards and bring your arms down. The griffin spreads its wings and off they go to visit his friend, the mock turtle. Coming down to sit in turtle pose. Take your feet out, keep your knees bent and put your hands in the middle. Now slide your hands under your feet, under your legs and make two turtle flippers. And what a sad turtle he is. He says, let me tell you a sad, sad story. But before he can continue, the griffin interrupts him and changes the subject. Coming into your griffin head, cross your legs, arms wide. Now scissor your arms the other way and lift up your underneath arm, twizzle them round. He says, why don't we teach Alice the lobster dance instead? Alice thinks this is a wonderful idea. How much fun will that be? And they all take their positions in lobster pose. Coming up to stand, take your feet wide and turn your toes out a little bit. Now bend your knees, nice strong legs, that's it. Take your arms up and make yourself two little lobster claws. They join in with a little song and a dance. Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, won't you join the dance? Will you, won't you, won't you, won't you, will you join the dance? After that, there's a loud trumpet fanfare sound, like an elephant. Stretch your legs out long and bring your hand behind you like a little elephant's tail. Then lift up your other arm, making a trunk, and do a big trumpet sound. And again. Coming up to stand. It's the Queen's fanfare. She's calling everyone back to court for a trial. Someone has stolen the Queen's tarts. Jump your feet together and fold forwards. The Griffin and Alice fly back, lifting and lowering your wings. Yes, Alice arrives back and takes her seat in the court. Standing up tall, cross your legs and sit yourself down. Whoop, there we go. Now. Alice watches very carefully, using her cosmonoculars, thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. Hmm, she's trying to make sense of it all, but it's really hard. She switches on her listening ears, rubbing them from the bottoms to the tops. Hmm, what she's hearing doesn't make any sense either. She can't bear it any longer. So she stands up and she puts her hands on her hips and she says, what does this matter? You're just a pack of cards. And at that, all of the cards begin flying around her madly. Jump your feet wide, jump your arms wide and start to spin. They fly around and around in a whirlwind and they're scattering everywhere. Alice doesn't know what to do and she huddles herself down into a tiny little mouse pose. Tuck yourself up into a tiny little huddly ball, everyone. She keeps very, very still. After a while, Alice wiggles her fingers and toes and she feels something pitter-pattering on her back. Take your hands onto your back, pitter-patter. She comes up to sit to find that she's sat by the riverbank and her sister is brushing leaves off of her. She says, wake up Alice, it's time for tea. Alice stretches her arms up and says, I'll be there in a minute. And she takes a moment to lie down all the way on her back with her arms down by her sides. She closes her eyes and she thinks about the amazing dream she's just had. What an adventure. How amazing her mind and imagination are. It makes us think about our dreams too. How wonderful our imagination can be. The stories we think of, the places we can go in our head. Places like Wonderland, where all sorts of funny and strange things happen. 
how magical it can be. How special it is that we can go to these places and have all sorts of fun. Just like Alice, we slowly begin to wake up, wiggling our fingers, our toes, and bringing our knees into our chest to give them a little hug. We roll over onto our side and we come up to sit, opening our eyes with our legs crossed. We bring our hands together at our hearts and we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Well done, everyone. That was amazing. Thank you for coming on the Alice adventure with me. You were fantastic. I hope you come back soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye.